Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in the series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's tutorial, we're going to learn about op mode structure. So yes, we're going to actually be dealing with code now, but first we got to learn about the structure of your code, how FTC specifically wants you to do it so that it will work on your phones before we can actually just go right into coding hardware. So there are two types of op modes that we can use, iterative and linear. So pe some people find iterative op mode very confusing to use, and I feel like um, the two kind of go hand in hand. If you learn about one, you're pretty much set with the other, I think. But I'm going to show you both, and then you can make the de decision on what you want to do for your team and everything. And I'll tell you along the way as to what I prefer doing, and then you can... I'll just show you all the things, and then you can decide which one seems easier to you. So let's go in to and right here and create our Java class. We're going to start with iterative. So I'll just call it iterative op mode tutorial. Okay. So now we have created our iterative op mode tutorial class. Now before we can go inside the class, outside of the class, we have to add an annotation. Now this annotation specifies whether it is autonomous or teleop. Right, I'm, preferably I use iterative op mode for teleop, but just to show you what the, the power of the annotation, I'm going to do autonomous. See now it's imported autonomous. Now it's gonna appear in your phone as autonomous. And then we can put parentheses and define the name in the group. So the name is a string. You can make it whatever you want to name it. So let's just say I'm going to name it um, red side move platform because our past season was sky sun and that's what we were doing as part of it was moving the platform and then you have the group this string it just groups them together the name of the group is actually is not actually included in the um name in the phone you don't actually see this name but every single group or autonomous that you give that group they will be grouped together and this is the name that you will see for this tutorial i don't need it so i'm going to get rid of it that's how you do that by the way just so you know and there's another annotation we can use here it's called disabled now what disabled does is it you, could, you can still see the code here, it just does not appear on your phone. So if for if whatever reason you would need to do that, just because maybe it's an old op mode and you want to get started with a new one and you don't want this one to be on the phone, that's what you can do. But I'm going to get rid of it now and optimize my imports. Not yet, actually. I'm going to change this to teleop just so that I feel better about myself. Come on, optimize imports. Okay, so now let's go into the class itself. So this class is going to extend a class that FTC has already put out for us. And for iterative op mode, that is called op mode. Now, do not call it iterative. If you see, that does not exist. So it's just op mode for linear that's how it's going to look. And we'll see that later once I do the linear op mode. But for iterative, it's just op mode. Got, we got to remember that. All right, so now let's go into the class. And right here is where you will declare, not delete, declare all of your variables. And this is more than just variables, actually. This is where you declare your hardware as well as your um, any variables you want to use throughout the um, program. So now like 
as an example of a variable, I'll just do this like a double. Actually, not a double. Let's do an int integer, and then we're gonna call it test int, and that's going to equal one. So like things like that, you wanted to put there, and throughout the series, we'll learn how to declare and initialize and use the different hardwares. That's actually going to be next video. We're going to start with DC motors. So just hang in there. We're getting there. Okay, so now the next thing you would want to do after you've declared all your variables, is so we're going to use the public voids for iterative op mode that first sends out to us. And this first void is called init, and you declare it just like that. And then in here is where you initialize all hardware. And we'll learn how to initialize the hardware in later videos. And not only do you initialize the hardware, actually, but you can also set starting positions for servos as well. So like, have you ever seen those stickers on the robots that say move on initialization? Well, that's what that means. Like you can press init and that servo will go to that position and yeah, and my plugins are ready to update. I'll do that later. Okay, that's init. So the next void we're going to deal with is called loop. And in here is where all the actions take place. As long as the op mode is active, meaning stop hasn't been pressed yet, everything in here is going to keep looping. So like you can say if the right stick is up at a certain position, then the robot drives forward. It's just things like that. And we'll learn how to do that once we get to DC motors, of course, and everything. Now there are two voids that I haven't talked about and they are the void start and the void stop. That's because you really won't need them. You're just going to end up leaving them blank anyways, but just so you know, start is things that occur once when the start button is pressed. You may need that. I haven't actually needed it, but stop, you definitely won't need. That is where um, your what happens when you press the stop button, which of course you want the program to stop. That's already programmed to do that. You don't want to have anything else happen while it's trying to stop and that prevents your stop time and then you can get in trouble with the FTAs and yeah so I think that's everything with iterative op mode so now let's go in and start our linear op mode we're gonna create a new class for this so we have linear op mode tutorial and I like to use linear op mode for autonomous so we're going to add the autonomous annotation and you can do the parentheses with your name and the group however you want that to be done that's up to you i'm not going to do it because i don't need to i'm not going to use this for anything so then let's start working with the class you got to put your extends linear op mode and there we go so now very similar to the iterative op mode here is where you declare variables. Just like the heart, you declare the hardware and your other variables here. Now here we have to include a new annotation. It's called override. And we are going, that's because we are going to be overriding what, um, what you, you want, we want to be able to override the void that first has given us which that void is run up mode, just like that. And then in here is where all of the things happen. Meaning you initialize and then you wait for start. I'll explain that later and then tasks take place so with the wait for start after you initialize everything 
and set the starting positions if you so desire, you are going to need to insert this. Wait for start. If you do not do that, right when you press init, your robot's going to start going and do whatever you told it you want it to do, and we can't have that. That's against the rules. We don't want that. So make sure you include the wait for start, and then after the wait for start, you can include all your tasks that want to take place. If you want to use linear op mode for teleop, I've seen teams do this. They do while op mode is active. They just do a big while loop, and then they put everything inside of the while loop. And that could work for some people. I personally don't like it. I just find iterative easier in that regard. But that's completely up to you. Don't let me influence your actions whatsoever. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Today we learned about iterative and linear op modes, and hopefully you learned which ones you want to use, if you want to use both or one of them. That's perfectly fine, whatever you want to do. So yeah, from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.